as opposed to executing the fundamental of blocking out first. Tony Williams capitalized on that. Forrest giving back to Eves. Eves tries to go inside to Brown, but it's stolen. Florida State picking off another one. David Spates coming up with the loose ball. Down on the right side, it goes down low to Mitchell Wiggins. He's had a tough afternoon. He's been constantly harassed defensively today. You know, you say he has a tough afternoon, and indeed he has because he's not scoring at his normal clip, but he's three or four from the floor, and he's leading the FSU team in rebounding right now, so he's doing the other things that count, and that's a true plus for him. Well, they'll keep him out there if he stays out of foul trouble. Gilmore's shot is an air ball, and the follow-up will not go for Mitchell Wiggins, but he was hammered on this one. Okay, just the fact that Mitchell Wiggins can operate inside amongst all these trees is really something else. Watch how he moves without the ball. He's going to the spot at the bottom of your screen, gets the rebound. Now watch how he tries to operate with the, in the land of giants right there. Pump fakes, hangs in the air at least 2.3 seconds, and he kisses it off the glass. Good attempt. The foul on Forrest, and Wiggins will get some free throws out of this, and he hits him at 72%. He has not been at the line in the ball game today. He's the leading player, by the way, uh, point-wise in the Metro Conference. He's averaging 26 points a game. He's also the three, third top rebounder, averaging 10.2 in that column. And you know, he's the only player to have been named Metro Conference Player of the Week twice. Not even the great Daryl Griffith did that or have that honor. How about that? Well, it was seven points at halftime, and the uh, Seminoles have gotten it back to seven again here after the Cardinals cut in momentarily. Now the Cardinals back to work offensively. Let's see what they're up to. They have not been able to run nearly as much as they wanted to in this ball game. And you can see Louisville is moving the ball a lot better, and one of the reasons Coach Curry has got two different players in there, and Forrest and Doozers to move that ball around, play with some intensity. McRae fights for it, and good on the second try. Rodney McRae finally gets the layup on his second effort, and he was able to draw a foul as well. Six points for McRae, and Gilmore draws his fourth personal foul. And Andy, there was the Louisville trademark. Good second and third effort. The thing that McCray did so well at that time and it's so hard to teach big guys is he kept the ball in the air. When he got the rebound, he did not put it back on the floor, allowing for a small, quick guy to go in there and take it away. He went right back up. Number 33 is Bobby Miles. He has come in for Gilmore, who didn't play that much in the first half because of a couple of fouls and picks up two more in a hurry here. 67% for McCray, and he turns it into a three-point play, and those Cardinals are right on the heels of the... Seminoles again, 39 to 35 the score. You can see it in the faces of the Louisville players right now. They're playing with much more intensity this half than they did the first half. They're moving more, they're getting the adrenaline flowing. I'd like to have been a little mouse in the locker room at halftime and heard what Denny Crum had to say. I'm sure that mouse has a bad eardrum right now. <laughs> We've got a reach around foul here. Jerry Eves commits the personal, his second. Even though that's his second personal foul, again, he's displaying good hustle and good aggressiveness, and I'm sure his teammates have got to see that, and maybe that hustle will become contagious. All right, Michael Johnson looks for the inbound and finally does get it into Wiggins. We've noticed great patience from these Seminoles today. They have not uh, forced anything very often. There's a pass inside that Wiley Brown intercepts, falls down, but makes the play to a teammate. Forrest with the shot, good. And give a lot of credit on that play to McRae as he penetrated, kept the ball in the middle, had good balance on the fast break that time, and you saw the rookie sensation, Manuel Forrest. And now it's a two-point game, and all of a sudden the Seminoles need a basket badly, but here's an interception, a four-on-one break up to Dozer. He flips it back to Wiley Brown, tie ball game. Talk about knowing where your teammates are. A nifty little play by Greg Dozer, who went over his back to Wally Brown, and that should be a good confidence booster for Wally Brown. Joe Williams not happy with the way things have gone in the second half. Four minutes into the second half, the Seminoles missing a shot here as Wiggins can't get it to go. Cardinals on a four-on-one break to the middle, and Wiley Brown, he missed the layup. The ball out of bounds is going to belong to Florida State. There was a chance for the Cardinals to take their first lead of the afternoon, but Wiley Brown missed the layup. How about that one? Well, a timeout has been called here at Tallahassee, the Civic Center. 15-58 still left in the ballgame, and it's tied 39 per side. 
in northwest Montana, up by Hungry Horse and Lone Pine. 1981, the greatest collection of figure skating stars ever assembled at one time. Tomorrow, NBC Sports World is proud to present the 1982 edition of the World Professional Figure Skating Championships. All right, time back in here. We still have over 15 minutes left to play in a tie ball game now. After the Seminoles had built an 11-point first half lead, Tony Williams whistles one in from the outside. I tell you, he's been hitting those twine tinglers from out deep down at the state line in the first half, and he's continuing this half. Inside to Wiley Brown, he gets this one to go. He missed a layup a moment ago that would have given the Cardinals the lead, but Wiley Brown now has eight points. You know, Coach Joe Williams was exceptionally aware of Louisville's explosive spurts. He was going to try to minimize that by controlling the tempo. Louisville is on a tear right now. That's why the game is tied. Here's William again. He really feels it this afternoon. Tony William with 14 points. He has already exceeded his average, and we still have 15 minutes left to play. Well, in playground terminology, they like to say the guy is shooting unconscious. It's automatic for him right now. Dozer fed it across the end line to Wiley Brown, but he threw the foul. Take a look at Wiley Brown. He's going to go up right in the thick of, right in the thick of traffic right here. Goes up, good strong power move, and he gets fouled. And again, as I said, so many coaches try to teach the players, don't worry about getting your shot blocked in the land of the Giants. Go straight up because if it's blocked the first time, you know you got him the next time with the pump fake, and you'll draw the foul. So here's Wiley Brown, who of course wears that artificial thumb on his right hand. Actually, he uh, gave up wearing it for a season last year and has decided to go back to it this year. Wiley has scored nine points off the bench today. Big, strong kid. You know, there are a few NFL teams that are interested in him as a tight end. Florida State by one, 43 to 42. Seminoles have the ball. They have not given up the lead today, though it nearly happened on that missed layup. Michael Johnson comes down inside to Wiggins. And you can just look on the faces of the Louisville players now. They're playing with much more intensity this half and give a lot of credit, as you said, to that halftime chat, quote-unquote chat, by Denny Crump. Well, we're guessing about that, but I'd say it would be a good guess. Here's another game. Uh, Georgia Tech is leading Maryland at the half, 31-24. to 24. And uh, also, it's Old Dominion over Virginia Commonwealth, 27-25. Purdue, 39. Wisconsin, 32. Texas A&M 35, Texas 32. Missouri 29, Kansas State 28. Wiley Brown and rebounded by Wiggins. Boy, he's been something on the board today. I don't know where they'd be without Wiggins, James. Tony William missing an outside shot. Rebounded Wiley Brown. Does he have a chance to run? He thinks so. Michael Johnson stripped him of the ball. Well, the fans show their appreciation right here. Here's Wiley Brown, the big fellow who wants to play guard. He's going to try to take it all the way in, but watch Michael Johnson get his hand right there on the ball. Good play, good play. 14 minutes left, Cardinals out of the ball. They keep working inside to Wiley Brown. He's short this time, followed up, and it's good for Rodney McRae. Nine points for Rodney McRae, and a lot of the Cardinal baskets have also drawn fouls. Well, the Cardinals are now starting to take advantage of the size and physical intimidation advantage that they have over Florida State. They're going inside to their front court members. FSU does not possess the size and strength up front, and they've done a good job of compensating for that the first half and up to this point in the game. Raphael Phillip is coming in the game, a freshman from Kissimmee, Florida. He's averaging about three points a game. He's still growing, they say. He's their big man of the future. Well, you know, both of his grandparents were seven feet tall, and they called him their enforcer because he plays a very physical game under the basket. Eves with the shot off the follow, can't get it to go. And the Seminoles come out of there giving up nothing again. Louisville with their first lead of the afternoon though, it's 44-43, rebounded by Phillip and he falls down, here's his follow try, good. Rafael Phillip. I tell you, the youngsters come off the bench, he's pumped up. The way his team has been playing the first half, he's trying to keep that same momentum going. Good, strong play by the youngster that time. That puts the Seminoles back up to a one-point lead. Thirteen and a half minutes remaining from Tallahassee, Florida. And this beautiful building, the Tallahassee Leon County Civic Center, just opened this year. Number 15, Greg Duser. He's their playmaking guard. Did not see a minute of action in the first half, but 
It's obvious Denny Crum won a better ball control in the second half. And he's doing an excellent job of quarterbacking the team. You see each time the play option that he wants to get isn't executed, he'll bring it back out, set him up patiently, and try to look inside to go to their strength. Maybe Denny had a feeling he was star of the game versus Florida State last year, and he lists that as his biggest thrill, being named star of the game. A basket for Forrest. Manuel Forrest, a freshman out of Louisville. Just a good individual move, Andy. That time he actually lost control of the ball as he was going up for his jump shot. Because he was so high, he was able to recover the ball and use good fingertip control to follow through. Six points for Forrest, and uh, Joe Williams is looking down to his bench again. This time he's going to get uh, Maurice Myrick back into the game. Myrick had some playing time in the first half. Myrick scored four points in the first half. And the first time the Cardinals have had a two-point lead. It's 47-45, Louisville. We still have over 12 minutes remaining in this ball game. Tony William, he has had the outside touch today. Here's Myrick just off the bench. Out to Raphael Phillip. Wiggins. Couldn't get that ball inside. A couple of times they've tried to force it in there. Take a look at the interior defense of Louisville. They're trying to play much more aggressively on the inside to force the action outside. Picked off by Dozer. Spates pass was picked off. Inside it comes. And goaltending. Give that basket to Jerry Eves. It's a four-point Louisville lead. Excellent play by, by Spates that time. Watch him go up high. He's got to put on his oxygen tank right here as he goes up. He's playing in the stratosphere. Good pin, but you can't keep it on the board. Well, that's 16 points in the game for Eves and the first four-point lead for Louisville right now, still with 12.05 to go. North Club's clear and head wall's clear. I guess it's Miller time. Don't forget the Andy Williams San Diego Golf Tournament coming up afterward. You take a look at the leaderboard there, but a reminder, too, that we have five other players who are within five strokes of the lead. Tom Watson, Tom Weisskopf, Tom Kite, Hale Irwin, and the big guy, Jack Nicholas. so don't give up on that one. Well, right here we have the Cardinals up by four, and we've noticed, too, that Derek Smith for the Cardinals has not played in the second half, and he has scored only two points this afternoon. That's a bit of a surprise. In addition, Andy, even though that was a good crowd pleaser on that blocked shot last time by Spates, give a lot of credit to Greg Dozer, who threw a pinpoint pass to his teammate. And now we see that Florida State's beginning to turn over the ball a bit, and that won't help their effort at all as they try to come back. Wiggins getting one of his rare shots. Here's Myrick on a follow, and he gets it. A tough inside play for Myrick. He has six points off the bench. you got to love the never-say-die attitude this Florida State team is possessing and showing today. Inside to Wiley Brown, but he can't find the spot today. Wiley's missed a couple of them right around the basket. And David Spates and Wiley Brown tie it up. And a foul has been called on Wiley, his second. Well, Wiley is shaking his head, and from this angle, possibly correctly, take a look at 41, follow him on the action this time as he goes into a position, gets the ball, goes up strong right here, doesn't convert, but now watch him afterwards, and they call him for reaching in right here. Bad back, angle. To, back to live action, and the Seminoles have the ball in their offensive end. Tony William will take it back and set it up. Wiggins, he can make some moves. Has a little screen to work with here. Swatted away by Forrest and goaltending call. Wiggins gets the field goal. He has 10 points. Well, indeed, that was goaltending that time, but watch the helping out, the good defensive rotation of Manuel Forrest, and look at him. He's up there in the stratosphere also. This freshman, they say, has got as much raw talent as anybody as they've ever had. And that pulls the Seminoles back into a 49-all tie. Still 11 minutes to play this afternoon. We've had a 15-point swing in the ball game from the Seminoles leading by 11 to Louisville being up by four just moments ago. Wiley Brown, turnaround shot. Well, he can't buy one right now, followed by Forrest, and the man who just had goaltending called at the other end gets the basket here, and Forrest has scored nine points in the second half. 
couldn't buy a shot that time, but the weakness on any zone is that a player is playing in area and it's awfully tough to block out that time, and Louisville is taking advantage of it by crashing the offensive boards. Here is a blocking and or tripping foul on Brown as Wiggins went down, and Denny Crumb uh, up off his feet. Then he brings a record of 251 victories and only 70 defeats into the game today. And that's something his 11th year at Louisville. So Wiggins will go to the foul line or I beg your pardon. They're going to make the inbound pass from the baseline to Wiggins back at the foul line. At least he's stationed there. And he was the outlet man on the inbound. Louisville zone the out of bounds play and they're going to stay with the 2 3 zone here. Lob to Wiggins, gives it up to Myrick. Thought about that corner shot. Now comes around to Tony William. In and out. And rebounded by Eves. Jerry Eves gave up the fast break, took it to the wing to wait for his teammate. Now that's good patience. Good decision that time by Jerry Eves. He didn't have to move. Won't go for Forrest. And Wiley Brown gets the rebound underneath, but there's a foul. I think David Spates will be called on this person. Take a look at Wiley Brown. He gets good position and watch the big strong fella go up, hits the ball with two hands, good power rebound, and he's going to go straight back up with it and he draws a foul. Open shot for Eves. It rims and comes out, but there's Forrest to put it in. Hey, this guy has 11 points in the ball game. Only Eves has scored more. I tell you, with this play on the inside, he's just going to say, hey, I need more playing time. I'm going to make the best of this effort today. And another four-point lead now for the Cardinals. Here's a whistle. A little tangling inside between Phillip and uh, Rodney McRae. That's the first foul on Rodney this afternoon. Well, now what Rodney is complaining about, he says, I got pushed first, but the official always catches you when you push back. Halfway through the second half, 9.40 left to play. Look at that block. Getting sky high for that one was Rodney McRae. Eves inside, knocked out of bounds by the Seminole. So the Cardinals maintain possession and they lead the game 53-49. Good play, good individual thought that time by Eves, but did you notice how fast Florida State got back on defense? Here's Rodney McRae. His brother Scooter has seen very little playing time in the second half. Scooter picked up his third foul and then went to the bench. Well, he's also been bothered by a bad ankle, so he probably hasn't fully recovered from the ankle injury. If you talk about the depth of these two teams, you would have to go with the Cardinals. Both teams had a very good uh, recruiting year, though. Each team has four or five good freshmen that they're going to count on in the years ahead. Now you see Florida State, they're in the zone. They're trying to disguise it. It looks like a 2-3. They're trying to get to the wing positions and the corner positions and keep them from taking those shots out there. And pretty heady defense played here by the Seminoles. Shot won't fall. Wiley Brown will follow, and he finally got one in. It's been a frustrating half for Wiley Brown, but he has 11 points this afternoon and a six-point Louisville lead. And as I mentioned before, Andy, it's always tougher to block out when you play in the zone because your responsibility is an area, and once a man comes to that area, then you're to block out, but you're always having to react. It's a lot tougher than playing man-to-man. -man. Tony William has hit some big outside shots, and his club going to be counting on some more from him if they're going to come back from this six-point deficit. They were up by 11 in the first half. There's Tony, number 23, puts a move on Dozer. It's good, and there's a foul. A nice spin move. Wiley Brown commits his fourth personal foul. Tony William with a nice turnaround move, and he'll have a chance to tack on a third point. Well, Tony Williams is just playing in an automatic mode right now. He's just turning that switch on automatic. Good one-on-one -on -one ball player. You get a good look at it as he's starting to shake and bake a little bit here. Good reverse move. And watch him go up with the 6'9", Wally Brown. Good follow through. And talk about looking at the basket. He didn't take his eyes off of the basket for one second. William is the best free throw shooter on the team at 86%. How do you like that? He misses this one. <laughs> However, the Seminoles keep the ball. It was last touched by Eve who tried to run it down in the corner. Well, we'll have a timeout in this uh, ball game. Still eight minutes and eight seconds left to be played. This one a long way from being settled, though, as the Cardinals lead only by four points. Tune to NBC later today when we'll take you to the beautiful Pacific Oceanside Torrey Pines Golf Course for the Wicks Andy Williams San Diego Open starting at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. 
when the best of the TPA golf tour continues on NBC Sports. Andy Muster with James Brown enjoying this ball game this afternoon. We've seen Florida State up by 11, and we've seen Louisville up by six. Well, the second half, Louisville has done a much better job of displaying offensive patience when the shot isn't there on their fast break. Greg Duza gave him an awful lot of credit for quarterbacking very effectively. In addition, Louisville is going inside to the strength advantage that they have in the front court versus Florida State, which you've got to love and never say die attitude that Florida State is displaying. It has been a surprise not to see Derek Smith in the Louisville lineup here in the second half. Now, the foul situation, by the way, both teams are in the bonus as of this time. And right now, with the clock running, exactly eight minutes left to play this afternoon, a four-point lead belonging to Louisville. And notice how much crisper the movement is on the interior zone defense of Louisville. They're getting out on the players and they're putting their hands up to create visual destruction, uh, obstructions right there. Gilmore can't follow the shot, fights for the rebound again. Still bouncing and picked out by Eve. Wow, that was frustration there for the Seminoles. Actually, Johnson forced his shot. Spates came up with a turned ankle on that play. David Spates is injured. He's going to have to leave the ball game. The big guy, number 50, David Spates, hobbles to the bench. Well, let's hope that that injury isn't too serious because he's done such an exceptional job. He's only a freshman, but he's been playing with a senior's confidence on the inside, battling the big fellows of Louisville. He'll be replaced in the lineup by Bobby Miles, the sophomore out of Tallahassee. 55-51, the Cardinals, they have possession. And Duzer, who did not see one minute of playing time in the first half, has played, I believe, the entire second half. Change of strategy by Denny Crump. Decided to go with, at least partially, a different set of play. Forrest did not play in the first half, and he's...